If you want to know why you keep being targeted as a narcissist snack, it might help to take a look at the ocean or canoe five factor model. I wrote about this on Facebook if you want to check it out. Some psychologists use the five factor model to define personality based on the premise that there are basically five core characteristics that sort of serve as building blocks for human personality. Ocean or canoe is an acronym that stands for the big five personality traits. These are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion or extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. These are on a continuum and everyone scores somewhere in the range. As you can imagine, narcissists would score very low on all of these except for extroversion and victims of narcissistic abuse would score very high on these traits again except for extroversion when it comes to narcissistic abuse personally i really think that extroversion can go both ways i believe that narcissists are attracted to both extroverts and introverts. Again, pretty much everything about workplace bullying and narcissistic abuse is twofold. Narcissists are attracted to a combination of both your strengths and your weaknesses. In the beginning, narcissists are attracted to your positive qualities. You have the best hair or the best tits or the best ass or the biggest dick or the coolest car or you come from the right family or you live in the right area or you went to the right schools or you have a certain amount of money or a certain profession or you move in certain circles or you have the right connections or whatever the narcissist wants to complement his or her social value in the eyes of others, to look good to other people. Narcissists collect people like tchotchkes, like nesting dolls. You're an accessory, an appendage, you're a handbag, you're an object. You are a shiny new toy for them to play with. I need this pretty face to show off to my corporate frenemies at baseball games. This is my car, this is my watch, this is my bitch, in that order. If you are extroverted, you shine. And because narcissists are so empty and superficial, they are easily distracted by pretty shiny things like little kids in a toy store. Taylor Swift, the ultimate extrovert. That girl likes to par tay pun intended. She can't be alone called it a never needy, ever lovely jewel whose shine reflects on you. Extroverted people tend to be very likable and popular. They're the life of the party and self-centered narcissists with no boundaries think that those positive qualities are a direct commentary on them. They are hoping that some of that shine rubs off on them. That is a lack of boundaries and it's entitlement. Again, anything you have, anything at all, they really believe belongs to them. Your shine makes them look good. That is, until you outshine them. Don't you even dare. If your light ever begins to shine more brightly than theirs, oh, you're going to hear about it. It's going to be next level devaluation. I will see your gaslighting and I will raise you one mansplaining. Conversely, I really believe that narcissists are equally attracted to introverts. Here are some signs that you are an introvert. You prefer your own company. You don't like gossip or small talk. You don't like to express emotion publicly. You find it difficult to open up. You don't like to ask or be asked personal questions. You're not very interested in other people. You find it difficult to relate to the people around you. And you feel like other people just ruin your inner peace and you just want to be left alone. Narcissists are attracted to introverts for a number of reasons. First, because introverts need to spend so much time alone to recharge their batteries and detox from all the negative crap they picked up. They tend to cultivate a very rich internal world and interior life. And that smells like high supply. 
You smell like low-hanging fruit ripe for the picking. The reason for that is basic economics 101, supply and demand. Introversion is low supply. And the lower the supply, the higher the demand. When you are introverted, you symbolize a challenge and a chase, a puzzle, riddle, or mystery for them to solve like a game. Again, people with low self-esteem who hate themselves genuinely do not feel worthy of unconditional love or of anything good at all. They really believe that everything good in this life you have to earn through hard work. They only want what they can't have. If you were energetically and emotionally open, available, and present, they would think you're boring. When you don't lay all your cards on the table, they think you are interesting, intriguing, elusive, and mysterious, a hard nut to crack. They think you are playing hard to get, which means that you supposedly want to be chased when the truth is that there is this little thing called consent and the word no is a complete sentence. But narcissists don't speak the language of consent. They speak the language of entitlement. And introversion is always going to be misinterpreted as snottiness. If you are an introverted person, the feedback you're going to get is that you are cold, unfriendly, uncollaborative, difficult to talk to, difficult to work with, don't play well with others, don't get along with the others, standoffish, stuck up, an elitist, high class snob who thinks she's better than everybody else or at the very least quiet and reserved. You're serious and uptight, especially if you are a woman. Let me go ahead and translate that for you. All that means is that they can't have sex with you. Uptight is really just a colorful descriptor for a woman's anatomy, if you know what I mean. It's wishful thinking. You may have one hell of an RBF. Do you suffer from RBF? In other words, you really need to smile more because you would look so much prettier. Introversion is detachment and detachment is aloofness. In French, aloof is translated as distant or distant, and it has a negative connotation in English. In English, aloof is an antonym for friendly. If you have appropriate boundaries in a professional environment, people think you're hiding something from them, again, because they feel entitled, and you may be accused of withholding and of lying by omission. Twice in workplace bullying environments, I have been accused of concealing the truth about my personal financial situation, as if that is anyone's fucking business. Get a load of the entitlement. Again, anything you have, anything at all, these people feel entitled to take for themselves by force. Everything you have, you are expected to give to them. How one shares abstract qualities with other people, I have no idea. A lot of workplace bullying is forced socialization, forced engagement. These people don't want engagement, they want enmeshment. Melanie Tanya Evans calls narcissistic abuse a soul rape, and that's exactly what it is. These people are psychological rapists, and they refuse to take no for an answer. The word no is a boundary, and a boundary can be only energetic. Introversion is very much an energetic boundary. Workplace bullies as narcissists absolutely do not tolerate boundaries because boundaries cut off supply. And boundaries to narcissists are shaming. When you assert boundaries with a narcissist, you are simply saying that there are rules to this relationship and certain behaviors that you will and will not tolerate. What the narcissist hears instead is a wholesale rejection of the entire self. One of the things that create narcissism in this world is just spoiling. The parents simply spoiled the child. They never said no to the child. And now that child is a spoiled, entitled three-year-old toddler in an adult body. 
when you put up boundaries with a narcissist, you become mommy or daddy saying no to a toddler and you're going to get a temper tantrum. Narcissists are already carrying around something called toxic shame. And when that shame is triggered, so is their rage. That's the temper tantrum. Workplace bullying is effectively one big temper tantrum that spoiled, entitled, three-year-old narcissistic adult toddlers are throwing because they are not getting what they want, to which they feel entitled. The final reason workplace bullies do not like introversion is that introversion forces them to look at themselves, which they do not want to do. Again, narcissistic supply is attention and attention is currency. When you are focused on yourself, you are not focused on them, which means you're not granting supply. And if you do that, you might as well put a gun to their heads. That's what it feels like. These people do not have the capacity to self-regulate, self-soothe, self-care, self-stimulate, self-anything because they don't have selves. They need to use you as a dildo to medicate whatever uncomfortable emotion that they feel in your physical presence alone that they cannot regulate themselves and that they can't understand because they don't have any self-awareness. Introversion is serene, tranquil, calm, and peaceful, and narcissists are allergic to peace. Your stillness and your silence forces them to be alone with the unhealed, unresolved pain and trauma that they refuse to confront. A lot of workplace bullying is simple harassment, like throwing a pebble into the surface of still water or sticking a stick inside an anthill to disturb your peace. Again, one of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is spiritual warfare happening on an energetic level and everything is energy and intent. Another one of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is the abuse of empaths by narcissists and empaths are sensitive to energy. I know how disgusting these people are. It has nothing to do with what they look like or what they smell like. It's just their energy. When someone bullies you, it's like they just sharted in the car. They are about as likable as, I don't know, gonorrhea. Like if gonorrhea were an actual physical person, it would look like everyone I've ever worked with. They make a very compelling argument for birth control. These people are sick and unfortunately, no matter how much we try to protect ourselves, when we hang out with sick people, we get sick. We all have not only a right, but also an obligation to protect ourselves psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, and above all, energetically. Again, introversion is an energetic boundary. When you are in a toxic environment, such as a workplace, you may have to be physically present, but you don't have to be mentally present. You may have the flight or even freeze trauma response to fear. I have a term for that. I call it empathic shrinkage, which I think I made up. When in the presence of any kind of negativity or toxicity, those boundaries zoom up like Beyonce's partition. It's just an instinctual knee jerk gut reaction. It's like you go on autopilot and you automatically recede, retract and withdraw. This is spiritual no contact. What Dr. Romani calls soul distancing. Long before I ever even heard the term no contact, I was already doing it energetically with a narcissist in my life. The problem with that is that it just makes the bullying worse. Again, energy is currency and it's narcissistic supply. By protecting your energy, you are withholding it from them. And they understandably find that personally offensive. When you refuse to engage with people, you're basically insulting them. I know you have the power to read, sense, and feel energy, but they're picking up on your energy too. They think you don't like them and they would be right. You don't. I know you don't. I don't blame you. I don't like them either. Although I am loath to admit it, and I'm not entirely sure this is always true, 
Workplace bullies are human beings and they want the same things we all want. They want to feel validated, heard, seen, understood, and accepted just the way they are. There may not be one single person in your entire workplace who is not a narcissist or a codependent enabler. But if your workplace is big enough, I bet you may have noticed at least one high vibrational person who is not bullied. They're spiritual, they may be witches, they have a solid sense of self, appropriate boundaries, real self-esteem, and a secure attachment style. They know how to make everyone in their presence feel seen and heard without ever betraying what they really think of them. The question is, how can you stand in the presence of a person that you know is low level, low vibrational, unconscious, and toxic without fear or judgment? If you want to survive and not get bullied, you're going to have to brush off your acting skills. The truth is you may not be a natural introvert. You may actually be more of an ambivert, but you have had introversion forced on you by toxic people. It's a very existential response. If there is no one in my immediate environment who has the capacity to treat me like a human being, well, I'm just gonna sit here and meet all of my own needs myself. I'm more than happy to engage for hours with people that I actually like, respect, and care about. In my life, I have had the good fortune to meet several beautiful sensitives, intuitives, empaths, light workers, white lighters, earth angels, who really raise my vibration with their high level energy. Most of them are men. I can count on one hand the number of women that I've met in my life who could find it within themselves to be kind to me. I'm not exaggerating. Back in the day when I was a Labrador retriever, just bounding up to everybody and slobbering all over them with my baba, I got the message loud and clear that I was too much. People literally called me that. I was coming on too strong, like a ton of bricks, intimidating and overwhelming people who just couldn't handle my strength, power, and intensity, qualities that are societally unacceptable in young women. So the first thing I did was I starved myself down to 109 pounds and put myself in the hospital for six weeks, which was the worst experience of my life. I learned to make myself smaller in order to make room for other people's insecurities literally. I had a term for that too. I called it shrink. It was my disappearing act, an energetic attempt to basically not exist because I was apparently such a problem for so many people. I learned to withhold my energy and give all my power away. I never go on the offensive. I passively allow other people to approach me and decide whether or not they would like to engage with me. The ball is in their court. I don't get all up in your face. I never ask any personal questions. I simply hold a safe space for other people. I have sat through the narcissistic monologue more times than I can count. If I have to hear that I am such a good listener one more time, I'm gonna lose it. In other words, I stopped showing up. I thought that's what everyone wanted. That is not at all what these people want. These people want and need this big ass, over the top, in your face, emotional display the minute that you meet them. Otherwise, again, they think you don't like them. And they want you to ask them questions about their personal lives because they like to talk about themselves. This is not to say that you should sign up for acting classes to cure your introversion. Just be aware of how you are being perceived. What you decide to do with the information is up to you. I hope that helps. Take care.